and good evening everybody yes here we are welcome to the second season of water deep more rats also known as water deep more rats black star lane and this is the yeah. very first episode everybody so welcome Woo! To yeah dark monday evening yeah. so gonna see how everybody is today and then uh we're gonna crack on and sort of just sort of set up the characters for today and sort of see where we're gonna fly into uh for the rest of this season of course as usual if you are watching you want to say hi make sure you say hello to mr dan berman who's on the chats as usual yeah i did the right thing this time mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm logged That's in it. so do say hi and we'll give you a shout out and uh it'd be great to see you guys anyway Okay, so um, so Evie, how's your week been? I've been really good, Bunga. Yeah, I've been really good. No, it's been a good week actually. Been busy. Um, today was quite fun. I did a Duke of Edinburgh, London edition. Um, because my students were meant to do it last year, and then obviously COVID, obviously. So we walked around London today, navigating. A very long route and then they they cooked their lunch on like tangiers and we were told to just bring a packed lunch so i was like great cheese on my sandwich and then as i was like eating it i realized my bread was moldy oh <laughs> I, i've been looking forward to it <laughs> since i made it this morning <laughs> obviously this morning i wasn't looking at what i was doing and then yeah but i ate it anyway how um, old are we talking <laughs> Like just along the edges, I just sort of peeled off the edges. You ate it, didn't you? I did. You I did. had nothing else to eat. We you dirty there. fucker. I know it's gross, isn't it? Well, but... that's what surviving in the wilderness is like, Evie. That's it. That's exactly. it. That's, that's what the Duke of Edinburgh is all about: finding weird exactly. fungus and eating it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's essentially penicillin, right? So it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Blue Apart... cheese, isn't it? Yeah. So apart from eating a mouldy sandwich. It's been a good week. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> and of course, you've got uh, new 18-year-old uh, Oshi, uh, Maggie, to play with today. I know. I'm really excited, actually. Mm -hmm. I feel like she's um, she's very much more pessimistic than than the younger Maggie. <laughs> I mean, should we have a look at your character sheet? Yeah, let's have a look. All right, let's have a quick look. So, um, all right. All right, all right, all right. All right. Let's have a quick look at uh, Maggie's character sheet. Okay. So, do you want? So, it's very blank, of course. Of course. So, as this season is extremely but... blank. Oh, let me just pop that in for you. There you go. Right. So, uh, in case you guys didn't know, we are using a very strange system this this time round. Um, which essentially, is level minus four. So the guys essentially have taken tens all the way down except for one stat and then taken two off of another of another stat. Um, so you went for intelligence uh, and intelligence. charisma. Yeah, intelligence at the top. So and you've taken a background of engineer. Yeah, I kind of uh, I was kind of drawn to it because of how I know like Baggy's kind of affiliation with the pawn shop and kind of like her being taught about like she's kind of in the last 10 years has sort of got her head a little bit more around like how things work essentially. Mm -hmm. because i think especially with the chaos of like all the magic at the end of last season it's like you cut she felt completely helpless there and didn't really know what to do so it's all i feel like she's kind of gone towards this kind of engineering fiddly type thing because it's literally it's physics you know and it's like it it makes sense it's kind of factual she can create something she's learning like how to manipulate metals or like how valves work and pressure mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff or to send so, stairs and she can walk maybe downstairs yes <laughs> <laughs> so uh part of your background gave you arcana and investigation and you also got intimidation because of your half orcness yes um so that's mm. quite interesting and you've taken some tools as well i see I have. I've got the jeweler's tools. Ooh, Ooh. Yeah. yeah, which is, I believe, <laughs> lots of lovely little things. A small saw, that's fun. A hammer, <laughs> some files, just for my nails, uh, some pliers and some tweezers. So it's actually quite small, sort of like dexterous things there, which is interesting yeah. for bagging. 
um <laughs> and also part of that obviously you had dark vision relentless mm -hmm. endurance savage, savage attack but you've also got urban infrastructure as well which i think is actually might be really useful in this yeah that is really cool like the ability to just immediately kind of have basic knowledge about the structure of buildings very interesting amazing yeah. mm, i know right and also, also can access blueprints what... as well on, on a specific building uh, well i also think this is connected to your uh your wand of secrets really isn't it is like yeah a little bit yeah, a little bit of See, that's back. known as an easter egg guys um <laughs> <laughs> but yes. uh because of your you're completely un non special in every way. Uh, you have eight hit points, <laughs> uh, armor class of ten, <laughs> and a speed of thirty. Really nice. Okay, so currently just same as, as Baggy Blackstar at at the moment, but um, that's what we have so far for you. So it sounds nice. quite interesting as like a, a movement forward for for Baggy. Um, yeah. A kind of more of a learner, learner yeah, a bit. which she, I yeah. think she was always going to be that let's be honest I think so I think especially now like it's almost like she doesn't really know where she sort of fits in in this world you know kind of like really in the middle and I wonder if she's kind of maybe trying to just fit in a bit more just kind of blend a bit like no one look at me I'm a bit different here do you know what I mean mm -hmm. so yeah it'd be very interesting nice mm -hmm. Okay, well, we haven't got any pictures yet um, which of imagery yet, but I think we can find that. Maybe if we get some people to send some in for us of what they think people look like, that could be fun as well. Yeah, uh, cool. All right, so let's let's move over to Rob. Hello. How's your week been, babes? Uh, yeah, it's been good. Uh I can tell Halloween's coming up because kids have started shooting fireworks at each other in the park that we live beside, <laughs> uh, which has provided myself and Gabby with many a night's worth of excitement, um, but also slight fear in case they see us uh, and shoot them at us. I've had yep. fireworks shot at me before, and it is exciting, but lethal. Mm. Um, on the food topic of uh, Evie eating a Maldi sandwich, I went out the other day and thought that eating a unlimited supply of deep fried prawns was a good idea. Uh, it, it, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> and I awoke uh, at about half four in the morning in the bathroom, which where I had fallen asleep. Um, and had to return to my bed. Oh, so yeah, oh, it's, been, it's been a week of ins and outs. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice, little shrimps and yeah. little shrimpers. Okay, so um, let's have a look. Should we have a look at Tunk and see what you're, what you're thinking? It. All right, so Monsieur Tunk, also known as Tunk the Trunk. So you have gone um, for strength. Strength. Surprise, surprise. Mm -hmm. Tunk is going for strength. Um, he is less dexterous than before, uh, <laughs> which, which uh, was, I thought wasn't possible, but here we are. Um, Butterfingers Tunk has a club now, so the rest of the gang can go clubbing with Tunk. And uh, I'm going for a gladiator background because Ooh. same as a bit of a brawler. Yeah, so this is why you've got the dagger, why you've got the club, isn't it? It's because of the um, uh, because of the gladiator. Essentially, you're an actor, <laughs> right? <laughs> but there's going to be no stage combat in here. No. Well, there will be combat on a stage, but I imagine it will be mm. a bit more violent than the likes that some of us are used to. Yeah, so usually acrobatics would be acrobatics and performance, but I changed it up to athletics because you're... Much oh, more thanks. of a brawler <laughs> than a tumbler. Um, <laughs> so yeah. let's have a look at your stuff. So you've got uh, dark vision, uh, dwarven yep. resilience. So you've got so against poison, resistance against poison. Um, dwarven combat training. So you have proficiency of battle axes and hand axes, light hammers and war hammers, which are not quite ready for yet. No, but um, we're working the way towards my soul hammer that we mm -hmm. had in season one exactly oh, yeah. yes and of course you do have a tool proficiency so what tools would you like smith's tools me thinks yeah i think so too thin as blood right. 
Let's put those in. Smith's tools. Okay, uh, and of course, stone cunning. Stone cunning, yeah. Yep. It can then... <laughs> kind of check what buildings are made of. Stone. Uh, <laughs> stone and stuff. <laughs> um, but more importantly, backed by popular demand. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you get free lodgings uh, in a place where you live <laughs> with a house already. So that's mm -hmm. quite useful, um, which is really good. Yeah. Um, also, you are something of a local figure. And people recognize you around town. Because bit. because what do you actually do, Tunk, for money on this one? Uh, I think that he's uh, part-time security for some mm -hmm. places. But where I'd say he's known around Blackstar and the wider community is uh, street fights or underground uh, illegal fights that have been made. Mm. Um, it's, so he's, yeah, a bit punch drunk, I think. Nice. Really nice. And I think it's sort of, yeah, so you, because of your dexterousness, you have an armor class of nine. Yeah. Initiative I, of I, minus I, one. I'm, I'm easy to hit. <laughs> you don't want to get hit back, I think. No, is That's Tom's true, I think so. Um, and then you've got uh, current hit points of eight, speed of 25, of course. All, all I need. Eight that's hit all points. you need. Ugh. Uh, okay, nice. Okay, so Tunks look pretty good. I think he's looking fairly strong. Um, so that is exciting. So we now have got somebody who's a maker of something and somebody who's a destroyer of something, which is quite nice. All right, so let's uh, let's pop over to Gabby. Hello. Ooh. How's my week been? Well, How has I, your week been? I am... Um... I haven't been out of the house since Friday, so I had a good weekend because I didn't have to go out and see anyone. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that was good. And um, yeah, that's it, really. I'm already one side down, so I'm feeling pretty sparkly and amazing. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. <laughs> should, we have a, should we have a look at 18 year old Oshi? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right, oh, let's it, have a look. It, it, is she is she the one that's nineteen, so she can oh, load yeah. it all over? Oh, she is nineteen. I might have to put that in somewhere. Uh, <laughs> nineteen. She gets plus one to smugness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. So, um, you have gone for charisma mm. as your top top uh, skill, as top stat, and your dump stat as your lowest stat is strength. Strength. Right. Okay. Let's have a look. So, um, you have gone for a criminal background. Yeah. Ooh. Criminal with the subclass blackmailer. Ooh, okay. So, uh, you get deception and, of course, stealth, which she, she was always good at. Um, you got yourself your crowbar. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and a dagger. And you got yep. a dice set. And you've also got some thieves' tools as well. Mm -hmm. so let me just make sure this goes in properly. She'll be gambling and stealing and killing. <laughs> yeah. And then getting money off you so you don't tell your wife. So Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. Can see. There we go. That's better. Lovely. Uh, and of course, you've got your dark vision, mm -hmm. your magic resistance and poison immunity, but you've also got a little bit of innate spell casting. Yeah. So you've got poison spray and animal friendship that you can only use animal friendship for spells uh for snakes yeah but you do have them yeah. um and of course your criminal contact mm. yeah so you have like a network of criminals that you can talk to that might help you with information and etc etc so that's quite an interesting one yeah so uh what so she's been blackmailing people <laughs> yeah she's uh yeah and she's she's power hungry and Inspired by gold. <laughs> so what's kind of like her main tactic then for blackmailing? Um, either lying and pretending she's seen people do things or persuading people to do things and then being like, hey, remember that thing you did? No one's going to believe a 19-year-old could do that. So um, it's either me or you, mate, and it's obviously going to be you. So you better give us some dosh. Nice. Nice, mm. nice, nice. All right, so Oshie, Oshie Blackstar. Um, yeah. 
very interesting though. Um, certainly one of our darker characters so far. Um, that was no surprise to anyone, though. No, that was no surprise to anybody. <laughs> um, okay, uh, Dan. Hello. How, you, uh, how have you been? Um, well, before I do that, can I just say hello to our really active chat room that we've got? We've had some really lovely comments already. We've got Mr. Liam Fleming has come to join Aww. us for the season premiere, saying hello. Hi, Liam. Liam. We've got someone on uh, on Twitch called Stuart. Maybe it's a Stuart. Oh, saying, Stuart. Yeah, uh, really, really enjoying the um uh, the new layout, Joe. Ah, uh, I miss you, Stuart. And then we have a Yuanti fan, <gasps> Joe Magic, who is saying yes, Oshi Soto, yeah, Yuanti for the win. Yes, <laughs> finally, the d the respect she deserves. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's infinitely more interesting than my week because I've done fuck all. Okay. Um, <laughs> lovely. Um, as you can see, I'm back by the famous window, mm -hmm. um, back in my own place after I was very wonderfully looked after by Mr. Joe Thorpe. It's only famous to your neighbours, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, we've, we've got lots of people tuning in today which is really really lovely lots of people yeah, tune in for the for the second can, season can i do a little shout out to mandy mandy watches every week and we we work oh, together mandy. yeah and she was she says she loves it <laughs> hi mandy oh, hey we all love mandy <laughs> we love mandy love it lovely yeah. um so shall we have a look at pups 18 yes. year old pups all right yeah 18 year old pups oh uh, let's have a look so, let's what see we what got? got. So you went with. So I went with urchin as my background. You did. Um, so your top stat was. Uh, it was dex. Was dexterity. Right. And your least was strength. Strength. Right. So as an urchin, you've got sleight of hand and stealth, which helps with yes. your dex. Um, yes. Of course, you got your thieves' tools. Let's just make sure your thieves' tools are done correctly, which I don't think it is. There we go. Make um, sure they're calibrated. And of course, you got your dagger. Dagger, 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 yes. dagger, 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 dagger. Um, and let's have a look at what you have. So, um, dark vision, of course. Fury of the small, uh -huh. which was it's absolutely brilliant. I was, um, was going to say though, my, one question: if we're if we're level minus four, mm -hmm. what does that mean for Fury of the Small? Because that means damage equal to my level. Do I heal them now? You do. You do heal them. Yes. Heal them. <laughs> uh, now we'll say that you do one. Oh yeah, thank you. Okay, nimble escape, so you can disengage your height. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, city secrets. So what's city secrets about? So city secrets uh, means I know just about every back passage there is um it means i will find out little uh, little dark alleyways stop it rob thompson um <laughs> you can carry on um it means that i will find all the sort of like uh um cut throughs and little hidey holes and places where we can possibly escape to and uh, and travel between that that might be very good for for lose, uh, losing people who uh, we don't want to be found by mm, really nice all right mm. Um, okay, so then uh, you, because of everything else, you have an armor class of 11. So you're the, the hardest to hit, I think, of the group. Um, initiative of 1, speed of 30, and of course your points are at 8. Nice. Okay, so it's an interesting one. So what do you, what's he been up to um, all this time then? Uh, just, you know, trying to keep deadly secrets away from uh, his friends. Um, just racking them up. Um, also, uh, working as a courier. Thank you, Kurt. Oh, Kurt, I forgot to shout you out at the very start. Thank you for always being our number one in the chat and first mm -hmm. one in. Um, Kurt suggested that pups become a courier, so I'm going for sort of courier and smuggler kind of hybrid, um, working for Honest Prize. Um, I think we've got... Uh, pups has kind of got some... Some jobs and then some shadow jobs. Shadow jobs, maybe a bit of smuggling, maybe a bit of thieving, maybe a bit of spying. A couple of things that, uh, you know, as as the relationship develops, I think is being sort of given more and more, uh, more and more jobs that require a bit of discretion and also a, a fair bit of danger as well. Nice. Lots, of, lots of sneaking and uh, sort of fast hands and faster feet, I think. Perfect. Mm. I mean, it makes sense with the urchin to be a bit of a courier. 
Um, it's always a bit like what's it called? Beat? Is it Beats from Spaced? Um, the guy who does oh, the tires. Tires, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I could imagine like in a little bit like that, which would be quite fun. So as soon as he hears any kind of beat, he has to dance. Yeah, exactly. Um... <laughs> I mean, that's just Dan. That's just you, Dan. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. You're not wrong. You're no, not wrong. Not wrong. Not wrong. So we got and also, I get a little pet mouse. You do get a little pet mouse. You do. Everyone gets a little pet mouse. Um, so you guys live above the pawn shop, of course, um, which is um, Price is Right. Um, what's the number? Price is Right. What what door number? Fifty-two. Lower. Uh, <laughs> three. Number three. Uh, I'm going to go for number three. Okay. Yeah, otherwise 52 is quite a big, a long street. And we don't want that one. Really great. Okay, so um, shall we... Yeah, shall we get started? Yeah. 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 All right. Um, all right, all right, all righty. So let me just uh, put some nice music on. Need to look for stuff because I wasn't prepared enough. Finding things, I'm not looking back, I'm looking for stuff. So, um, I thought what I'd do is I'll start a little bit of a bit of a montage, I think, to kind of start with. Okay, light hearted. No, that doesn't sound right. For you guys. <laughs> Not for us. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh God, no. No, God, no. Um. So this is like low-hearted, <laughs> heavy-hearted. <laughs> Very hearted. No oh, hearted. No heart. Black Star Lane. <laughs> We're all sad here. We're all sad. <laughs> oh. 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 There was a happy thought, but it died ten years ago. <laughs> Haunts us now. Talk still having a nice time. Oh. <laughs> Hooray! There he is. So in the back room of a basement uh, on a bench we see this hulk of shoulders the ginger hair crawling up the back so you see his arms come out wrapping bandages over his knuckles he kind of flexes his own muscles and you see every single tendon and stroke of muscle as he flicks his beard over his shoulder to take some water and throw it into his face water comes down as he stares towards a piece of glass a looking glass as the grizzled face of a young dwarf looks back at him he begins to hear the sound from next door of a body hitting onto the canvas and the bell ring thinks to himself that this is the time takes his fingers cracks them looks towards the mirror and he says to himself We do it for Claude. As a uh, minor tour steps in behind uh, and sort of takes a, a big towel, throws it over his shoulders. Just this once, remember hook, hook, head straight into the body. Ah, uh, yeah, hook, hook, body, okay. okay. Look, you're a champion, you know you're a champion. Yeah. Thank you, hard rack. And he takes, puts his hand into his pocket and pulls out this like half stubby cigar. 
sticks it in his uh, between his clawed mouth and like strikes his nail against the side and burns it. Blows smoke into the room. It's plenty of bets on you today. Uh, what, what's, what's the highest bet? <laughs> Don't worry your little face about that and he slaps you around the face. Uh-huh. Okay. As he opens the door and the blinding light of the uh, of all of the oil candles that are around the basement and the roar of the crowd kind of comes through your ears. So we come through to uh, a great, beautiful building. And there's a group of women all coming through the door. Uh, they're let in the back, through the round of the back, the servant's entrance. Uh, and they kind of go up the stairs as we see a flash of scales on one of their arms. So they go up these grand staircase into this great and beautiful study. So we walk past, we see the, the side on the side, uh, uh, Lord Magistrate of the city of Waterdeep. As the women kind of fall in, there's a great giggle and laughter as they all know what this is usually like with the Lord Magistrate. The drugs begin to flow, the alcohol flows. And one woman goes and sits upon his lap, looks towards him with her eyes as they blink the opposite way through. And suddenly there's a blade at his throat. And she says to him, Not again, my lord. Uh, it was, it's, it's, it's just once, just this once. Just this once. As he takes money out of, the pocket, out of his pocket and places the gold on the table. Please. You promise you won't tell anyone? Just this once. As she takes the gold and it passes it evenly amongst the women as they ransack the place. Three of them taking anything and everything that they can get their hands on. The Lord Mayor sat there, just in his underwear, knowing that if he says or tries to stop them, his reputation will be ruined. As she turns towards the great big door, a hand goes onto the door handle, opens, as she goes into the darkness. As suddenly someone's running through the alleyway, jumping over boxes this one jumps into he jumps into this like open doorway falls into a kitchen and runs scrabbles through as someone shouts at him as he comes through the back door bounces off the wall does a somersault and lands down towards a butcher's holding a package sorry i'm a bit late 14 seconds Fourteen seconds late. <laughs> You'll have to forgive me. They um encountered a little bit of trouble along the way. Ah, she sort of takes the the package and opens it out, and it's a like a whetstone. As you notice, that his whetstone is uh, been broken and snapped and smashed to pieces. As he begins sharpening his blades, it's supposed to be open now. <laughs> I'm sure your loyal customers will permit you 14 seconds. <laughs> he like throws a couple of copper pieces towards you. Can I, uh, can I use that before I go? Of course you can. What would you like? I've got some uh, offal. I've got some, uh, some, maybe some bits of kidney, I suppose, would be something good. Just the whetstone. He looks down at the whetstone, confused. Ups takes out a dagger, just holds it up. Puts, his, puts it down in front of you. Mr. Puffs. You. 
don't ever show your face in here again, otherwise I will call the watch! As you take, you take the block and you run, somersaulting through windows and jumping off boxes. As you fall into this um, this doorway and you pile through and it goes into this candlelit room. As we focus down on the shoulders. As we see a light shine off a magnifying glass that's attached to an eyepiece. A set of tweezers come and take a tiny little cock and place it down on the side. As the camera swings around, we see these big fingers, green. These tiny set of pliers placing cogs into a pocket watch. She lets go. Gives the first cog a small tick. She closes it up, holds it up. She looks at this object and she says, See? You're better again. The clock just ticks back at you. Perfect. She lays it down onto a, into a, into a small box. Which is sort of laced in, in um, velvet. She places it and rounds it through and closes the door. You hear a bell, ding, 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 as the shop opens. In comes this rather large and very pompous looking lady. Uh, and you can hear the little yaps of a dog next to her. You go, ow, 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 ow. Oh, Henry, please be quiet. <laughs> She wanders in and you can sort of hear the, the floorboards creaking as she kind of wanders in. Baggy? Baggy? <sighs> yes. Hello, uh, I, how are you? I'm very well. Any customers today? As she kind of wanders around to the side of the of the till, where the till is. Uh, not so far. It's been a slow one today, I'm afraid. Mm. Well, mm. never mind. I thought there'd be so many objects coming in, especially since uh, Arthur Blade has died and all of these objects being given to him, given to family members, usually they're pawn them off. Yeah, well, I've just been working on a pocket watch. Oh, let me um, see. She picks oh. it up and opens the box. <gasps> Baggy. Picks it up and looks at it. Gorgeous. This is the same yeah. ob this is the same object that uh uh this is the same uh object that uh the listers brought in. Oh yes, yes. The it broken is, yeah. one. Yeah. Baggy. There's something about objects you just seem to understand. The idea that the magic within it is something to do with what it used to be, not necessarily what it is now. Huh. Yeah, exactly. I think anything can be fixed if you know how. Mm. Took me a long time that one, though. Mm, of course. <laughs> and she puts a, opens the till, bing, pulls out an extra silver coin, puts it down. I don't say I don't appreciate a good piece of work. Thank you. Ah. And Baggy just takes it, pops it. Good. Have you looked at the other objects yet? As you kind of turn over and you see this kind of pile <laughs> of stuff. Uh, uh, not yet. I so I got a bit lay with that one, but I can, I yeah, I can, I can start. I can start now. <laughs> Good. Good. As we kind of see through, she pulls out a, a little tip bit and throws it down to little Henry, uh, the tiny, the tiny lap dog, and he kind of jumps mm. up and bites it, and he looks at you. All right, Henry. <laughs> like, yeah, all right, Henry. She got a picture of you. Do 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 do
Bag was just me, just freaked out by it in in all of its entirety. Like I don't like that dog. <laughs> <laughs> as a kind of like the wind sort of knocks the door front door open, as the kind of the the camera kind of goes outside, and we see that we are outside out of number three, Black Star Lane. Uh, honest, uh, priced is uh, priced is right. As the camera goes up the stairs, up the building to the first floor. To a simple, small, uh, square room with four beds in it. Who is home at this point? Should we say that suddenly the door slams open and Pups runs in and jumps onto a bed? Mm -hmm. Um, Pup sort of uh, yeah, leaps up and before like climbing up onto the top bunk just sort of does like does a load of pull-ups okay. <laughs> make sure he's just completely exhausted any energy that he has left and then sort of flips up and <sighs> gets into the bed it's been a long night um, it's actually been a long a long couple of hours because it's actually the sun's just setting as we're coming into oh. night time so the whole day you've been running around mm -hmm. um and you're holding onto this whetstone <laughs> Why have you got a whetstone? Um, so you're holding on to this whetstone. I don't know. I just wanted to sharpen my blade. This guy just seemed extra jumpy and gave it to me. Like, <laughs> I'm cool with it. It means we can sell it on again. <laughs> so you kind of like pull a blade out, your dagger out, and you start. Start. Okay. Is there anyone else in the room? Anybody else in the room? Nope. I think it's fight night. Yep. Um, then Pups uh, completes the normal ritual that he does when he goes into the room and no one's around. Um, lifts up the corner of, uh, of the mattress, sort of unpicks the four stitches from the corner of it and just makes sure that his Harper's badge is safe yes. before sealing it back up deftly closing it and then just goes back to really meticulously sharpening the blade yeah. it's been a while since he was able to uh uh to renew the edge yes i mean it's, it's interesting that the um uh that the the Harper's blade itself is actually like rusted to hell. Um, the pin part of it's kind of bent, where it's been underneath the bed the whole time. Um, as you kind of sharpen your blade, you kind of look down at the blade itself. Um, and this kind of thought comes to you about the blades, the family. About your family, this family. As suddenly the door barrels open and this kind of heaving ball of sweat and blood and bruises kind of like barrels through the door. His ginger beard sort of swinging and sort of still <coughs> sort of curling from all the sweat. I want to fight. <laughs> Pups sort of looks round, sees the state, tunks in. I hope the other one looks worse. Uh, well, it kind of looked like a horse. I think it was a centaur. It kicked me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hang on. Come here. Pups goes up, puts... Uh, puts his thumbs either side of uh, of Tunk's nose and just pulls and resets it. Ooh, should we do a should we do a roll on that? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well. Okay, can you do um uh, let's do a medicine medicine check. Sure. Um okay, medicine check is oh, Rob sat there going, God God this is good to sign. You're gonna be sixteen. Has he he's still got a nose? <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, uh, 16. 
perfect yeah right okay so um yeah you you click it back perfectly straight and then suddenly there's a sudden realization you can breathe again through your nose Banco. <laughs> It smells really bad in here. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it does. His pup shoes. Um, yeah, so he's been running in them all day. <laughs> been a long day, Tonk. And as the nose has been realigned, the passages have slightly cleared and fresh blood just starts to trickle down <laughs> into his beard. And he's like, Ah, uh, yeah. Tuck need to clean himself, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Did you get a good purse at least? Uh, no, I haven't been paid for the other days yet, but uh, <laughs> I do it for the I do it for the love, you know. <laughs> so you don't take money from from these. <laughs> <laughs> I think that Honrak, my trainer and fight owner, um, he says that it's it's all coming. <laughs> that I'll get paid in, in dividends, but Tonk hasn't a fucking clue what dividends means, so he <laughs> assumes that it's just in the on the way or something. Okay. Does Pup, um, Pups, do you know about this deal, or is this the first time you've heard that Tonk doesn't get paid? I think this is the first time. Okay. Don't let Oshi hear about this. Well, my rule is always never have any money on you and then Ashi can't take any of it. <laughs> right. But remember the house rules. We have to make a certain amount of money to survive. Yeah, I know. Tuck does other things for money. <laughs> <laughs> Why you got that stone? Uh, it's well it's something to sell now uh i just wanted to borrow it but the uh uh the butcher was very kind i, uh, I even managed to get uh some of this and pops just produces like a small bag of offal that he swiped on the way out you're gonna you're gonna eat that we're gonna eat that uh okay <laughs> <laughs> We should wait for we should wait for Baggy and Ashi though, because you know what they're like. Yes, and we should also cook it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> As I, like he grabs hold of the offal and you just go and you stick it on your eye. <laughs> <laughs> As this kind I of keep door, it warm. This door kind of creaks open. And sort of standing with her arm up on the door frame in the most glorious dress. That any of you have ever seen her in, uh, stands your antique. It smells too bad in this room for this dress. <laughs> you look really pretty, Ashi. You look awful, Tunk. Thank you. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> puts the awful back on his eye. <laughs> Where have you been? The same place I always go. Right. Pop just goes to start preparing the meat. Did you win, Tunk? Yeah, yeah, I beat a horseman. Oh, and the prize money? Yeah, someone wants a prize money, yeah. I, I think so. Lots of bets were put down on me, Hunrak said. Okay. That, tuck, tuck doesn't have any. It's covered in dividends. Divins dividends. Divins dividends. Yeah. And her face, <laughs> you just see her face just drop. Uh, mm. Pops told me not to tell you. <laughs> Pops just shoots a look over to Oshi. Mm. <laughs> well, it's good I made these then. And she produces five gold pieces. And you throw them in uh, what's known as the piss pot, um, which is a small copper pot that sits in the corner of the room that you guys put all your money in. Um, but there's not piss in it, obviously. Um, but it's sort of like it's a hidden spot that you throw your cash into. 
Where do you get those from? The same place I always get them from. Work. Oh, uh, okay. I thought actually that's what you do for a job. I don't know what you do for a job, Tunk. Tunk doesn't know what he does for a job either. <laughs> and then you realise you're feeling a little bit dizzy. Tunk's going to sit down for a little bit because Tunk's not really paying much attention to the... Does, does, does the air feel thick to you? And it's like, boom, as he's like, sits down onto the ground. As well. uh... Oh, she gets out some incense from somewhere within this dress and um, <laughs> strikes a match and just burns them like near pups and tunk while she kind of stays standing on the other side of the room. Ugh. Um, as we kind of go back downstairs, as we see Baggy <clears throat> lock the front door, um, and there's that moment of like everything's quiet again. <sighs> Do you hear the ticking of the watch? Do you go past and you see the watch set sort of lying on the table again? And Baggy just sort of closes the lid of the box that it's in. Just like pats it almost like and out. And she looks around the room and she sees um, this kind of small like brooch uh, on the side. And it's like, it looks a little bit silver. Uh, and it has this kind of like two um, amethyst sort of eyes on the brooch um she puts her hand into a pocket and feels that there's another brooch in her pocket and she pulls it out and they're two identical looking objects but one looks maybe like the silver's not quite shiny the amethysts are not quite as sparkly is that the one in her pocket or the one yeah, in the Yeah, the sock? one in her pocket is slightly duller. Um, she decides to place both of them down on the table, kind of just move some stuff out of the way and gets out this like pair of goggles and starts sort of inspecting both of them under the light. Leave the candle. Okay, so let's do an investigation. Excellent. Ooh. Okay, here we go. Oh, investigation's good. It is a an eleven. Great. So you kind of see that one of the amethysts is like cuts are slightly wrong. One that was in your pocket. So you get at this tiny file, and you begin to kind of like sharpen it so that it looks identical to the real expensive one. Um, so let's just do another roll with your carpenters, uh, with your jeweler's tools. Um, nice. We're going to do it with intelligence. It will ask you what you want to do it with. We're going to do it with Okay, great. Um, here we go. Oof. Oh. Um, Five. Just, and you kind of look at it, and to your eye, you think they look fairly right. Could have done better. You reckon you could trick enough people into thinking this is the right real object? Right. As you pick up the fake one, and you pop it back on the shelf. And the shiny one just goes, takes a little bit of cloth, a little bit of extra security, and just puts it back in her pocket. Kind of checks no one was walking past when she did it. And then, then starts making her yeah, way upstairs. Upstairs. And she goes up up the stairs and literally the smell of cooking offal and Tonk's B.O. kind of fills this, the staircase <laughs> as you kind of climb up. It's also mixed with this like weird jasmine-y sort of flavour that's also being done for her from, from Oshi. Um, and all you can hear is this huge loud shouting um, <laughs> as the door opens and Tonk is sort of like like spread eagled on the floor 
I got kicked by a horse, Baggy. <laughs> oh. Oh, my. It's not like the horse has been in here and died about two years ago. <laughs> I won the fight, Baggy. Well, that's good. I've got a bone to pick with you, though, Tunk. Have you pinched my tweezers again? I'm actually asleep right now, so... <laughs> Punk, seriously, you need to stop tweezing your toe hairs with my tweezers. I get it so long. <laughs> and then Baggy just like walks over and just like gets out a silver coin so that everyone can see it and then chucks it in the piss pot. <laughs> and yeah, I think you walk past and you grab hold of this like bottle, this green glass bottle. <laughs> and she pours out, what does she pour out? Ooh, I think it's some kind of like really dark, dodgy homebrewed rum. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's the nick from the Polican Pearl or something. Mm. Well, if that's dinner cooking, I might just uh, pass on that and have a drink. <laughs> Why'd you fix the day? Did a pocket watch. Ah. Mm. To make it make it tick again. Mhm. It ticks. Well done. Thanks. Thanks. Uh. Well, Ashi's got a magic dress. Oh yeah. Where'd you get that then? Same place I get everything. Bob work. <laughs> and as you wink, there's like run of blood sort of cuts over. <laughs> <laughs> Well, are you going to put that in the piss pot? No, I've already put five gold pieces in, but thanks for the one silver. Should well, Pop's only brought a stone. Uh, 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 uh. Not quite five gold, but there's more in there than that. When are you? Uh, when are you bringing your winnings in, Tunk? Mm. Well, time for food, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> As we Wait. kind of like start coming through the camera, and you just see you hear weight from Baggy. <laughs> As she stands up over the knocked out body of Punk. Wait. You won a fight, but you didn't bring home any actual winnings. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Ah, my ears are wor not working. Ah, ah. Tunk, look at the state of you. I thank her. <laughs> the state of you. You're beaten to shreds, mate. You need to make sure that you get paid for this. I'll take the hub back tomorrow. I can go and see him if you want. Uh, no, I I I'll speak the hub back tomorrow. Don't worry. Okay, if you don't come home with anything tomorrow, I'm going to go and see him. Maybe with Pops? Okay, I'll speak to Hubrack now. Uh, I'll take food for later, okay? Okay. And Tom kind of like pulls himself to his feet and slowly staggers out the door. So you kind of make your way downstairs somehow. Um, and you kind of step out into the street. Um, the street is unusually quiet this evening. As you kind of step out, you see the uh, sort of the fog rolling through. Um, as you see, um, like a couple of people kind of milling around. Um, you see, like a two men kind of go together and go down a, a corridor um, together you just got to catch them as they're holding hands as they disappear uh, you see um, uh, you see uh, more doc who is um, sort of sat on the on the street he's drunk again um, he's holding a, a bottle and he's having he goes ah Tunk, give us a coin. Give us uh, a, a coin, Tunk. I'm actually looking for a coin myself, my dog. Right. 
silly. Yeah, pretty silly. <laughs> and you got to see <laughs> all of his teeth are just like broken and brown, and as he kind of like tries to empty the gin out in his mouth, and just nothing happens as he kind of falls to the ground. You kind of walk up the street, and you see there's like there's usually you kind of know that this kind of feeling of quietness on the street usually has a couple of things that it could be either that there's something horrible and dark's going to happen or everyone's saving their energy for some sort of great celebration the next day um the usual smell of piss and shit sort of like fills your nostrils as you walk up the road to number 16A. As you see the three-story building in front of you and the steps that go down into the basement. These steps are wider, would you say? Yes. <laughs> much yeah. wider. Much, than usual. much wider, yeah. <laughs> Uh, as you kind of come to these like double doors, almost like barn doors at the bottom. And Tunk, with a very heavy fist, bangs on the door. And then like a slider opens. And, he's kind and of Tunk like... has to kind of jump up to see the slider. And this door opens. Oh, Tunk. Hello, Hardback. Please come in, come in. Oh, okay. Thank you. And he closes the door. Good fight today, good fight. As I said, hook hook into the body. Very good fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hook hook body. Uh yeah. Um and Tug's like clearly very nervous, playing with his thumbs and just kind of looking at his feet. Uh uh Hardrack. Uh, mm-hmm. Um I have two questions. Uh what does dependence mean? Ah, it means that you get paid later on. Okay. Um, what's the word for getting paid right now? Well, that's um, but it's professional, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Can I have a professional, please? Ooh, see, professional rates are uh, a lot higher for for the trainer. Okay, it's just that I haven't actually made any money for all the fights that I've done, and I'm mm. waiting. I gotta. I gotta get some money, you know. See, you've made loads and loads of money, Tunk. Oh, okay, that's good. That's but good. I, I'm just protecting it for you. Oh, okay. I think I could protect it myself, oh, you know. I'm not sure. And he puts this like big hand on your shoulder. Can I have a little bit of it, please? Yeah, of course you can. Of course you can. You can have as much as you like. Oh, I'll take all of it then if you're oh, yeah, say And he puts his hand in his pocket. Yeah, there you go. Six, six gold pieces. Six gold pieces? Six gold pieces. Thank you. And you know what? Rack. That is only from last week's fight. So what do I get from this week's fight? Oh, that's coming in dividends, you see. So where do where does the dividends come? Okay, it'll be next time you have a fight. I'll pay you this week's one. So I get paid every next fight. And then this slap goes behind the back of Honrak's head. And this like much thinner, but like hugely much more muscular, much more toned Minotaur kind of steps out. <laughs> uh, hello, Fimi. Like, father pay him what he's owed Hanrak looks at her and he's like you do not talk in this terms of family business and she turns around and just punches him in the back of the stomach and he drops down like, oh, oh, oh. you're old and you're frail dad now pay Tunk what he's owed he puts his hand into his pocket and he pulls out another two gold pieces. I haven't received the money from 
this week. I'll pay you next week. That's okay. And Vimmy looks at you. So he seemed to favor his left side then. Yeah, well, he kicked me pretty hard. She kind of looks across. His nose is pretty good. He did that. Uh -huh. I am my friend. Your, your friend? Uh, no, just my friend. Ah, I see. And then she sort of, you can see that under her like fur and stuff, she blushes slightly. <laughs> your nose looks nice as well. <laughs> and she sort of flicks her nose ring and it's like, come <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> Look, uh, are you uh, are you going to the funeral tomorrow? Of uh, Mr. Blade? Yeah, Arthur. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I should be there. Hmm. I might um, shine my nose ring then. Oh, okay. Hmm. Just in case there's other, you know, minor tools there that, that look good. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I might brush my teeth. Hmm. She kind of leans forward and goes like, and you see that kind of like, no, off the nostrils. It's like, yeah, it might be a good idea. You smell like awful. And she kind of like picks her dad up off the ground. Okay, well, thank you, homework. Thank you, baby. I, I need to go now. And sort of like, let yourself out. See your training tomorrow morning. Yeah, I'll see your training tomorrow. I'll see you at the funeral. Bye. And Tunk like kind of has shares a look for a little bit too long. And then holds his chest up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and then peace. <laughs> but then the thing is it's the door opened, you sort of stumble over the first step yeah. and then kind of yeah. climb up the stairs. Um <laughs> and make your way back towards the house. Weird. Um, is it eight gold pieces I have on me? Eight gold pieces, yes. Great. Um, you can sort of see that the that even the pubs are a bit quiet tonight. Um, as the uh, as Le Chat house, or Le Chat Maison, uh, is, um, is also quiet. Um, it seems to be just one person sort of sat in the pub as you kind of walk through past the windows. Do I see Mordok again, still slumps? And Mordok's completely passed out now. But he's still in the same place, is he? Yeah. Um, Tunk walks up to him and puts one gold coin in his pocket and is, just kind of straightens him up a bit. Is Mordok like in the doorway of number three? Um, I think he's probably he just sat on the, on the, on like a stoop of across the road. So let's call it number seven. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's leaning out the window smoking and just shouts, Tunk! Oh, uh, he, he, he dropped a bottle cap. You're too kind. And then she flicks a cigarette at, um, what's the what's the person's name again? Mordok. Mordok. What? Ah, silly son. I was about to sleep again. <laughs> and uh, Tunk kind of makes sure he's kind of comfortable, puts the bottle upright beside him, um, and then climbs the stairs up to the house. So as you kind of go up the stairs, we kind of go down the street of Blackstaff Lane. Um, as we hear like cries of a hundred children in one room, um, we see like the pub itself with the single player playing through to one customer. As we come round into uh, number 21, uh, which is the door on the door frame, it's just a, a dagger like on the door frame. Uh, as we go into the living room, uh, as we see uh, Mar Blade and Billy. And most of Billy's mates sat around the fire, 
and next to them on a stand in a coffin is the body of Afa or Arthur, a blade, with two coins in his eyes as they watch him for the night, ready for the funeral in the morning. Okay, so I think we're going to take a little break there. Um, as we'll come back and go into the funeral itself. Oh, uh, this is so much fun. And see how we get from there. All right, guys. So um, we'll see you in about five minutes' time. Um, and we'll continue with the funeral. All righty? Got a funeral date. All right. I'll see you later. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. bye.